talking about 1985 with the Hall of Famer Chris Giesman. Uh, this club went 7-3, 5-2 and two in the Northern Indiana Conference. Chris, this is one of those rare moments in your career where you didn't win the Northern Indiana Conference. You finished in a actually a four-way tie with second place with Mishawaka, Elkhart Central, and Elkhart Memorial. Actually, the John Adams Eagles with two great running backs <coughs> won the, the, the conference championship uh, that year. And I want to talk about uh, that opponent right now because they had two of the Lamar Clark and... Uh, and Anthony Johnson, and Anthony Johnson yeah. two of the greatest players of all time in this area. Two special kids. Let's talk about the matchup, having to defend against those guys. Well, they had some of. They were basically a senior team, and they played a lot of kids both ways. And uh, we knew they were going to be pretty good. Everybody, uh, you know, we tell everybody back in those days, in the '80s. I mean, South End football is as good as anybody in the state, and, and people find that hard to believe today. But. Uh, the one thing to show you how big that, that was for Adams, when Anthony Johnson went in the Indiana Football Hall of Fame. Now this is somebody that's lettered four years at Notre Dame, was a captain, spent, what, nine or ten years in the league with the Carolina Panthers. And they asked him what his fondest memory was, his biggest memory. He said, well, one for sure is when we beat Penn my senior year in high school. So of a, a guy that's four year low at Notre Dame, been all that time in the pros, his biggest, one of his biggest accomplishments, he was proud of so was beating Penn. So that just kind of shows you how people fired up for us in those days. And that was a, uh, a good game. And uh, the, the other, we lost another game in overtime. And uh, we lost in the playoffs. We lost to an undefeated team that went to the Dome on the last play of the game. So, you know what, seven and three, uh, there's a lot of schools that have a parade and take a day off school and honor their team, but that was just, uh, uh, we just knew we had to get a little better. Well, let's talk about the balance of the league that year. I mean, really, uh, it's probably, as you alluded to, it's never been this kind of balance. Mm -hmm. Adams is six and one, Mishawaka Central, Penn and Memorial, all at five and two, and then you had Michigan City Elson that finished seventh that year. A year before, they were at the top of the league. So they were pretty good. They were near the top. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think that there was so much balance at that point in time? Well, I think uh, at, the, at that time, I think it was very, very important to South Bend to have good athletics. And it starts at the top and works its way down. It doesn't start at the bottom and work its way up. I'll guarantee you, if you got a superintendent that wants to have good sports and is going to give you, within reason, what you need to win, you're going to have good sports. All right. Uh, an interesting game against uh, uh, Elkhart Central in 1985. It was my birthday, 10-5 of 1985. You guys were able to, uh, Rich uh, Carlton, uh, your quarterback, uh, threw the ball. Uh, and you guys were able to score. And let's just talk about... Uh, you know, Rich's play and uh, coming up with a win against Central with 30 seconds left to go in the game. Yeah, that was uh, that was a very, very exciting game. That was uh, when we knew that uh, that we had a quarterback future in Rich. We had a, a couple good ones. They both had one of the Griman brothers. They just had to believe in themselves and. Uh, and uh, they both ended up being uh, being starting quarterbacks before they left uh, Penn. That was uh, that was a uh, a huge huge win for us because, like you say, it was a there's there's a number of games that year that could have gone either way. Okay, can I time out for a second. Mm -hmm. 